Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of Five Games, Five Minutes from aconelectron.co.uk. In Death Star, you get the chance to play the famous arcade game Sinistar on your little Electron. You're in a spaceship out in deep space equipped with a heavy duty gun. This gun will make short work of anything that moves in. When you use the gun on the planetoids that float around, they release crystals. The game is a bit of a deep space version of the honeybee and the hive. The red workers that scurry around have one aim, to grab crystals and return them to a hive. Each crystal assembles a piece of the deadly Death Star. You, on the other hand, have the aim of grabbing the crystals to convert them into a star bomb for when the Death Star inevitably gets finished and attacks you. There are blue gun emplacements called warriors that float around and try and shoot you as well, just to make things a bit more difficult. When the Death Star attacks, you need to find it on the radar at the top of the screen and keep it behind you, whilst you loose off all of those star bombs. Each hit will break a piece of it away, 20 hits and you'll complete the level. This is a brilliant game, and one where there's practically no difference at all between the arcade original and the electron conversion. In fact, Death Star would struggle to be any better. Blockbusters the TV show was an institution in most families' households throughout the 1980s. In this game, you get the chance to play the famous Gold Run game. You have to answer a succession of questions to form a path from the left to the right of the board. Clues to the answers are given by the first letter of each word. So, for example, where spinsters of a certain age are said to find themselves is on the shelf, so OTS is displayed on the block. Each time you answer correctly, you fill in the block in gold. If you get a question wrong, the block gets erased. You can often find a way around an erased block. Alas, if you're not British, or if you're thick, then you might end up with so many erased blocks that you can't make a path to the other side. Although this is really a very simple question and answer game, there's something about making that chain from the left to the right of the screen which is very satisfying. There are five files of questions to load in too, so the game does have quite a bit of longevity. They really should bring back blockbusters. It was great! Future Shock If you thought old graphic adventures on the Electron were much of a muchness, then this is the game to change your mind. Future Shock is almost like a work of art and it seems quite fitting that it was designed by a company calling itself the Art Crew. The rather odd backstory states you are Glob the Blob and you are looking for 16 pieces of a puzzle scroll. That's a bit misleading. I wandered around for ages on my first go looking for scrolls and finding none of them. What I did find were power pills that increased Glob's life expectancy. These same power pills are in fact the pieces of the scroll. You turn on the puzzle by pressing 1, pulling down a menu and selecting the puzzle. You are then presented with a sliding block puzzle. The best part of Future Shock is the animation, which is not readily apparent when the game starts but constantly surprises you as you move from room to room. It creates a real atmosphere of fun and lifts this game into the essential to play category. In Daredevil Dennis you play a stuntman and your only objective is to earn as much wages as you can. You do this by revving up the engine on your motorbike and trying to jump over houses, snowmen, snowballs, ambulances, in fact, all manner of cartoon-style graphics that get in your way. You can hit the brakes if you're travelling too fast. The trouble is that the pace of the game is such that you often travel from one level to the next before you really know what you're heading into. There are holes in some levels too, and you can either jump these or head straight into them. You won't be killed if you fall through them. There are six different stuntman qualifications, with a multitude of challenges to each of them. The easiest qualification is still so difficult that you're doing well to get past screen two. How you're meant to deal with the ace levels is beyond me. Give it a go, if you're a masochist. Mikey was an early arcade game by Konami, which came steaming onto home computers licensed by Imagine Software. You're an American teenager looking to win the heart of your girlfriend Mandy. You play a number of screens linked by corridors. I think it's only fair to point out that this game came out only months after the original arcade machine did. And it shows. You can really tell that this was a rush job. No care seems to have been taken with the sprites and, although the game runs quickly, it feels clunky. You race around numerous levels avoiding a manic teacher, crazy janitors and chefs and trying to collect hearts. The schoolroom level, which is the one that is instantly recognisable to many, is probably the only time you'll ever find yourself using a, quote, hip zap, unquote, manoeuvre. On other levels, you avoid cheerleaders and pick up hearts by shouting at them. It's far too random for my liking, and survival is based on luck, not skill. 
There's little reason for not combining the hip zap and the shout function into the same action key, and the corridor scenes are just a joke. Probably the worst conversion of an arcade game on the Electron by a clear mile. 